and I was walking down with this bright light and I was, well, running actually, and just recording the whole of the scene. Um, so as I ran down, you can see on the screen as it just starts to record all of that light going down that scenario. And this is the result I got using that composite mode. It's absolutely incredible. It recorded just about every single leaf in the shot. I was absolutely blown away. I've been a big fan of Panasonic for video for many years now. In fact, it started with the incredible GH4 when it came out in 2014, which is 10 years ago. And when that 10-bit 4K video came out with such a small form factor, after using professional Sony Handycams, I was blown away. So I got into Panasonic then. Then I moved on to the GH5 and it had a ton of new features. Quality went up to 400 megabits per second, all intra 4K video, which is still amazing to this day. And then I moved on to the Panasonic S1H, which is a Netflix approved video camera. And it's absolutely superb. But all of those cameras had one major flaw and that was the autofocus until now. So this is the Panasonic S52X. It's the latest full frame iteration from Panasonic and it's fantastic for video and stills. It's a great hybrid camera. I got sent this by Panasonic for a few days under their fantastic Lumix loan scheme. Now, the last time I did one of these, I actually ended up buying the S1H because trying before you buy is really important because you get the camera in your hand, you can see how it works, you can see if it's gonna suit your needs, get to play with it for a few days, send it back, whether you wanna buy it or not, but you just get that for free for a few days. It's a great scheme, so they only run it now and again. I'd highly recommend it. They pay for postage to your house and pick up from your house. So you don't pay a penny, but you do pay a deposit, but you get that back as soon as you've sent it back in the same condition you took it in. But I've had a play with this for a few days and I've fallen in love with it. And I will admit, when I first got hold of it, I was a bit, that's actually quite small. After coming from the Panasonic S, S1H, um, it, it felt a little bit small because it's obviously um, not the same kind of camera as the, the Super Pro S1H. But our first impressions were, oh, that's quite small because it didn't have a lens on or anything. And it's very similar. If you look at the GH4, it's very similar in size to the GH4, which I was gobsmacked by because when this has got a lens on, it's obviously a bit heavier. But you can see there, it's not that much different and also not much different to the, the GH5. So really the form factor is pretty good. And I like that now, I actually got used to it almost immediately because it's much easier to carry around as a run and gun camera. Now I particularly like this for weddings, that's what I'm gonna be using it for, but I'll come to that in a bit. But really there's 12 things I really love about this camera and eight things that I wish would be different. So let's go through those. Okay, so first of all, the image quality from this camera for both stills and video is fantastic. 24 megapixel sensor for stills is brilliant and you can see on screen now some of the images I've taken with it on a, just a very quick walk around Weymouth and I was really, really impressed. The photos are fantastic, really crystal clear, great in low light, uh, autofocus is super quick, the colour scheme is fantastic as always with Panasonic, uh, their colour science, so I was really chuffed with that. And the video quality, you can see all these horses I followed along the beach in Weymouth, the video quality was fantastic. Now I did have the camera on a stabilizer, on a Manfrotto handheld stabilizer, um, but the, the stabilization built into the camera and lenses is superb. But for me, professionally, I would always use a different stabilizer when using that sort of shot. But you can see from those horses on the beach, absolutely sublime. And you can see these other clips I took in and around Weymouth where the quality was just so good, so crystal clear. And it's just the same as all the other Panasonic cameras that I've used. It just gets better and better. So I'm really, really chuffed with that. So my next love is the open gate sensor. And what that means is your image will be taken from the full frame sensor in a three by two format. Now that means that you, most video gets output at 16 by nine, but on this camera, you're gonna be recording the full three by two full frame sensor at 24 megapixels, the entire sensor. That means you get about a, a 6K resolution clip. Now the significance of that is, it means you can either crop in during edit to make it look like you're zooming, and if you're outputting at 1080p, you can zoom in quite a long way without losing any quality. But you can also output a 17 by nine full, uh, 4K frame, a 16 by nine 4K frame. You can do a 4K square for Instagram, superb, superb quality but also you can do the vertical 17 by nine or 16 by nine for social media in full 4K. So obviously doing that with the smartphone is pretty good, but nothing beats a proper dedicated camera and you don't have to actually hold the camera like this and film for uh, 4K. You can do open gate 6K that way and then crop in. So with those horses, I filmed in uh, open gates 
and that meant I could have the full 6K video, I could have a 4K crop, and I could have the 4K vertical crop for social media. So that for me is a massive plus. Next, let's talk about autofocus. It's sublime. I was so frustrated, even with the Panasonic S1H, I only ever use these for manual focus, whether I'm doing stuff like this, or if I'm doing a wedding where the focus is locked down, or if I'm doing commercial shoots where I'm fully in control of the manual focus, I've used it for that. Autofocus on the GH4, GH5, GH6 and the S1H are all pretty poor. It works, but not that great. So when this came out, the first thing I did was check the autofocus. Now, when it comes to autofocus on Panasonic cameras and the S52X in particular and the S52, there are some settings that you can do in there to actually change it depending on what you're shooting. So for example, if you're photographing or filming someone coming towards you, you want a really fast and accurate autofocus. So you need it to be constantly working. Whereas if you're doing a kind of slow transition, you want it to, to be a bit more of a slow transition from foreground focus to background. And in the camera, you've actually got one called AF speed, AF sensitivity. So you want it faster for when something's moving quickly towards you. You want it slower when you want that slower cinematic kind of change in focus racking. Um, and then with the sensitivity, you want the same sort of thing. You don't want it to be overly sensitive. So if something walks in front, it's gonna just quickly change the autofocus. You can bring that sensitivity right down. So if something walks quickly in front, it won't necessarily change, okay? So when I did that, you can see on the screen now, I've got my daughter walking towards me with a wide angle lens. And as she walks towards the camera, I've got it set to eye focus as well, eye control. So it's focusing on her eye. And as she gets up to the camera with the wide angle lens and stops there, you can see it's perfectly focused on the eye. The background's blurred. I was using a 24-105 F4 lens, F4 on 24 millimeter, and that worked really well. So I was pleased with that straight away and I had it working quite fast on those settings. So it's fairly sensitive and a fast autofocus. Next, I did it same, the same thing on telephoto, and I think I was at around 85 millimeter, tested it with her walking towards me again, and as she stopped, it was perfectly focused on her face and stayed on the eyes and looked really good. In this next clip, I got my daughter to walk past the camera, so I was on about 85 millimeter again, and I was focusing on her face, and as she walked past, it nailed it. It stayed on her, focused on her face as she walked past, really pleased with that and I tried that a few times and it seemed to work pretty much every single time so I was really happy with that side of things um, and then I've got Amber walking with me so I had the camera again on a stabilizer on a Manfrotto stabilizer on a wide angle and she was following me as I walked backwards and obviously the stabilizer worked super well but the focus absolutely stayed nailed so I'm thinking about things like weddings when the bride's walking um, with the father maybe to get married or if the bride and groom were taking them off somewhere for some special shots this is going to look really good and I can trust myself to use a really wide aperture to get that shallow depth of field knowing that the focus is going to stay on their faces okay so I tried it first with the wide angle lens and then on this next shot I was particularly happy with and I set the camera to 85mm on a telephoto lens, having my daughter walk towards me and me walking backwards again. And you can see on some parts of there, the bouquet from the, from the lens is absolutely sublime. There was a car coming up the road and it just looks fantastic. That blur in the background looks great. And overall, I was so pleased. The autofocus, I tested it over and over again. And again, here you can see my daughter playing guitar. So we set up in her, in her room. Again, I was using the 24 to 105 millimeter lens and it pretty much stayed um, on the center of the frame. Now, again, with the autofocus with Panasonic's, you can change the, the area of the, the um, sensor that you're gonna be using for focus. So just bear in mind that if you're gonna be using autofocus on the Panasonic S52 or F5, S52X, then you need to think about those things, the sensitivity, the speed, and also what part of the frame you're using. And just a quick flick of the jog dial upwards will set it to eye focus and a quick jog down will actually set it, oh sorry, another jog up will set it back to normal. So you have to think about what you're shooting with these cameras and then set accordingly and then just fire away. But bear in mind that you do need to do that little bit of work to make sure you get the focus perfect every time. Now to finish off on this, I actually wanted to see if I was doing a panning shot with landscape with something in the foreground to see if I could get it to transition really nicely and slowly to the background because in the past with any of the other sort of focusing methods with, with Panasonic, it would either hunt or it would focus, it would look horrible, it would breathe, it just wouldn't look natural at all. I didn't like it, so I never used autofocus, I used to do it manually. So in this instance, I had the, the camera focused on a, a ship in the foreground, 
and then I, I set everything to slow. So it's a slow, slow transition, slow speed. And you can see here, as I move from the boat in the foreground to the background, it changes nice and slowly as the central point moves onto the background. And again, you can set that ad infinitum, you can custom set that. So I just set it with a small central portion. And as it moved off the, the boat in front to the background, really nice slow transition. I did it again when I was following a boat going along the river, along the, uh, the input, along the harbour in Weymouth. And as it transitioned onto the foreground, you can see it just really nicely changes focus again and then stays on there as I go around. So if you're a big Panasonic fan and you've used either the GH4, 5, 6 or the S1H series and you're thinking about getting one of these, 100% get one because the autofocus is sublime now. Okay, almost, I think it matches the A7, Sony A7 III, not quite as good as some of the Canons or the R3, other cameras like that, especially with stills, but for video, absolutely perfect. Now the next feature I love with the Panasonic, and I think it's happened with the last couple of their iterations, the S5 II and the S5-2X, uh, is Live View Composite. Now this is something GoPro had as well, and I've done a couple of videos using that with video, um, but you can make some amazing Live View Composite photos with this camera now, and you can see in real time on the screen as you're painting. So if you like painting with light and like getting creative with that sort of thing, then this you will love and it's amazing. So I'll show you here, we actually set up last night, me and my daughter went out and I had the S5 2X on a tripod and I had the S1H behind it filming the screen and filming what I was doing. So this was set on a tripod in a pitch black environment. You could see nothing. So we had to take a torch along. When there was no light, you could not see a thing and it was quite eerie. So I was actually had, had the camera set up, focused on this kind of uh, walkway down some trees and I've got it all focused and set up, set that running. And then what I did was took this, which I'm gonna be reviewing soon. And I was walking down with this bright light and I was, well, running actually, and just recording the whole of the scene. Um, so as I ran down, you can see on the screen as it just starts to record all of that light going down that scenario. We did a few of them, and this is one of the favorites that came out. Um, I used a, a slightly more amber light and it came out really well. So next I tried, going off piste a little bit so I didn't run down the path this time, I ran down the outside filming the light or throwing the light through the trees as I ran down the side and this is the result I got using that composite mode. It's absolutely incredible, it recorded just about every single leaf in the shot. I was absolutely blown away and these shots you can see now, I actually set the camera up in my mirror in the bathroom so it was recording itself and I would use this small light with different colours on it. So this is one, something I've reviewed before, but you can set this to all different sorts of colours. And what you do is just paint the camera with those lights every now and again. And you can see on the screen as it actually records it. And I actually ended up in a bit of the shot as well, so it looks quite cool. But you can think about product photography using that scenario. So if you've got this camera using that mode on a product, you can just paint the light to your heart's content. You don't need loads and loads of colored lights. You just need something small like this, a little LED RGB light, and you can just create all these different kind of colors and it's brilliant. So that, that live view composite is fantastic. Now, I was curious to see if this would work in daytime. So you think that the shutter is going to be open quite a lot of the time and it only records when it sees new light. So even if I was in daytime and it takes a photo in daytime, it's recorded that light and it will kind of shut off until some more light appears. So very quickly, I just ran in front with this on a purple kind of color and lo and behold, it recorded that as well. So you can do this in daytime and nighttime for painting with light. So if you are a creative sort, you're going to love that feature. So those are my four main favorites with the camera. Um, I'm gonna quickly rattle through the next seven. Um, you've got image stabilization, which is amazing on this. If you've got an image stabilized lens and the inbuilt stabilization, it's absolutely superb. Now there's an extra one called Boost IS that you can use if you're standing still static filming, say a football match or filming something where you haven't got to move the camera, it will look like it's on a tripod with the boost on. You've got e-stabilization in here and you've got the Boost IS. Boost IS is no good if you're panning because it will chop and change a little bit. So you turn that off and it still works perfectly for panning shots. But if you're standing still, the image stabilization, the e-stabilization e with Boost IS is amazing. Okay, so I love the stabilization in there. It's fantastic. But professionally, I still use a handheld uh, stabilizer for running and gunning and stuff like that. Um, low light, fantastic in high ISO. The S1H is fantastic. I've shot this at 10,000 ISO and it's brilliant. This is no different, so it's a fantastic camera for low light photography and video. 
So next, the dynamic range is fantastic with this, with stills or with video, and I've managed to pull detail from the shadows without losing any image quality. So I'm really pleased with that. And also pulling back the highlights, it's amazing. There was a shot of a seagull where the, the, the uh, fur was slightly overblown because it was a really sunny day. And I got all those details back and it's super, super sharp as well. So yeah, that's fantastic on here. Next, the color science I love on Panasonic anyway, and this is fantastic. It's still as good as it was with the S1H and the GH5, GH6. So that's brilliant. What I found amazing on this, and it could be quite overwhelming for people, is that there's 33 recording quality options up to 6K. So there's tons in there, um, but you're gonna see some downsides to that when we just do that list quickly in a minute. But 33 different options with this camera, you're not gonna be kind of missing anything. You've got 6K, 4K, 5K, 5.9K, 1080p and then loads of iterations of each. I won't go into them all, but just trust me, you're never gonna be wanting for anything on there. So next is the size and weight. Like I said, when I first picked it up, I was thinking, oh, that's small coming from the S1H, but now I've fallen in love with it and I think I'll be using this more than the S1H when I get one, of course. Um, but I think it's gonna be great for weddings. So this, with its manual focus, will be locked down for weddings, for the main events, for the, the speeches, and also for the ceremony where I need it locked in the focus. Don't want it hunting as people walk past. That'll be that camera. This will be my kind of run and gun walkabout camera, doing all my trendy stuff, using, making the most of the autofocus on there. Now, when the S1H Mark II or the S2H comes out, it's gonna have the same focus system, so I will be getting that as well. So my perfect setup will be this one, the latest one with the new focusing, and then the uh, S5 Mark II X. So those three cameras set, fantastic. Really good image quality, great autofocus on two of them, one locked in with manual focus, happy days. So the size and weight of this is great for just a grab and go camera or just for those run and gun scenarios. So yeah, pretty pleased with that. So the next thing is overheating. The Panasonic S1H has a fan at the back here by the rear screen. You can see the inlet there, outlet on the other side. I've never heard it, it's dead silent. It means I can film at 6K, high resolution, whatever, indefinitely without fear of overheating. The S52X now has the same, but this time the fans are actually in the hot shoe up here. So you've got an inlet there, outlet the other side, and one underneath there. So again, you can film at high resolutions. You can film in open gate 6K indefinitely without the camera overheating. So that for me is a massive bonus. And then lastly, you've got the audio options with this. Again, one thing I've loved about the all the Panasonic range, the GH4, 5, 6, and uh, S1H and this, is the fact that you've got great audio capability, so I can have it going directly into camera, or I can use the um, H8, H6. And I've got, I think there's four channels on here you can record to in the camera, but you've also got the headphone jack, you've got full size HDMI, and then you've got your USB-C, so you can charge this from a power outlet um, which charges the battery all day. So you can just keep this running indefinitely using the hot swappable cards. So for things like long events and weddings and things, it's brilliant because you can power it externally. You've got dual SD card slots, but also, like I said, the audio on here is absolutely fantastic. So that's my 12 things I like. What don't I like? Okay, so these are things I don't necessarily like, but they're not gonna be a game changer. They're not gonna change my mind as to whether I buy this or not. Um, first of all, you've got an S and Q mode, slow and quick. Now, rather than having to change it in the menu, that's actually an S and Q on the dial itself. So rather than fanning about there, you can just put it to S and Q and you've got something set up and ready to go. You can do your slow kind of stop motion or you can do your slow motion stuff through there. Now, I like it, but with 4K and 1080p at high bit rate, you can only record those to an external hard drive. It hasn't got the card capacity to be able to do that which is why I, I, they've only used SD card slots. I wish they'd put an XQD or something in there. Um, but that means with those kind of higher bit rates doing slow motion, you have to have an external hard drive. And then with 1080p at 120 frames a second, it's good. So you can record to the card at 120 frames a second with 1080, but if you go to 150 frames per second, um, you can only shoot manual focus, so you lose that little bit there. And if you go to 180 frames per second, you only have manual focus and it crops in as well. So obviously the speed of the sensor isn't quite that good at the moment. And I'm hoping that the S2H will have a slightly better sensor, so it'll kind of mitigate those issues. So it doesn't, it's not a game changer for me. I can still use 60, uh, 60p, um, but I have to think about those kind of issues. Next, the 4K only goes to 50 frames a second or 60 frames a second uh, rather than 120, which is a bit of a shame because even the GH6 goes to 4K 120 using the full sensor. 
Um, so I was a bit gutted about that, that this, the slowest it goes is to two times slow motion. Um, not great, but I can live with that. So next is rolling shutter. It's always been an issue with these cameras and even Canon cameras. In fact, the 5D Mark IV in video was just awful. It looked like lamp posts were on their side as you panned. So really, really bad. Not so bad in this camera, but it's still there. So it's something you have to be aware of if you're going to be panning fairly quickly. Okay, next is the tilt screen. So with the S1H, what I loved about this is it flips up and out and round. So it's multi-angle and for me that was just brilliant because I could have it like that filming along. It, it's just perfect. It works really, really well. I like this one. It's the same as the GH5, GH6, GH4. It just pulls out and twists. That's it. It doesn't flip up as well. But again, I can live with it. I'm used to it from the other two cameras. So that was just a little minor gripe. Uh, another thing was the all black camera. Now, the design, some people have bought this camera just purely for that design, so all of the lettering is blacked out. Same with the buttons on top, they're all kind of greyed out. Um, I think it looks cool, but when you're working in low light like I was last night, you need a torch or something to be able to see them. They're really hard to see in low light, so you have to really pay attention or just learn what's on the dials. Um, and then when you change it, make sure on the screen what you've changed to is accurate to what you need. Um, yeah, I found that a little bit of a pain, but I still think it's pretty cool, so it looks the nuts. <laughs> now another issue um, I think is a bit silly on a camera like this, and they should have added it. On the GH, oh, sorry, on the S1H, I've got tally lamps, and they've got them on the front and the back, so that while I'm recording, if I'm filming myself in something like this, I can see that that red light is on and I know it's filming. It's a bit cheaper than obviously the S1H, but I think even when you get to this level, you should just have a little tally lamp on the front and back. It's not hard to do and it's kind of a bit of a pain. Again, it's something I can live with, but it would, would have been lovely to have. Um, similarly, with the S1H, it's got a red record button on top. This has got the nice little red record button on top as well, but this has one on the front as well, which I find really, really useful because when I've got this in a cage, that's a bit restricted and I have to squeeze my finger underneath to get it and it's a bit of a pain. So I just use this one on the front. So I'm assuming that when this is in a cage, that's going to be covered over slightly by the cage. It would have been lovely just to have a little red button down there to be able to handhold the cage and just push that as well with my smaller finger. Okay, so again, it's just something that I, it's not going to be, it's not going to change my mind as to whether I buy one or not, but it would have been nice to have that second uh, recording light. So lastly, there's no CF Express card slot. It's just two SD cards. And obviously you're limited with those depending on what camera and what settings you're using. Um, so it's a pain because a lot of the settings in here, I can't use to SD cards. I have to use it to an external monitor or an external hard drive. So it's a bit of a limitation. I don't know why they didn't put a CF Express card slot in there or something a bit faster. Um, and I'm possibly thinking it's because the S2H is coming out fairly soon. So they're gonna wanna keep some of the, the features back for that camera to make it more professional. But it would have been nice to be able to use all the features in camera. It's the same with ProRes. I can't do ProRes internal unless it's I think 1080p. Otherwise I've gotta use an external hard drive. So those are my kind of gripes with the camera, but they're not gonna change my mind on whether I buy one or not, because for what I need, this is a fantastic second camera just to use for run and gun using that amazing autofocus. So I hope this video's helped. If it has, please like, comment, subscribe, do everything you need to do, but do not hesitate to get this camera. If you're a Panasonic fan and you're used to the GH4, 5, 6, or S1H, just know that this has got just about all of those features and a ton more and it's got that amazing autofocus, so I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this to anyone. It's great for commercial, weddings, run and gun, pick up and go camera, it's just fantastic. Obviously there are limitations, but if you can deal with those, then it's a buy from me.